Yo, what up basketball card collectors and investor friends, Cajun Cardboard coming at you from the great state of Louisiana on uh, Sunday, maybe December 5th, I am thinking. Uh, the year is going quick, running out of time, almost 2022. Um, I've got a another PSA reveal for you today. And uh, the topic of this one, as you can see from the thumbnail, is don't judge. So um, this is a great video that depicts how much the market has changed, uh, uh, how much the threshold of what is and is not grade worthy has changed in the last 12 months. So I don't want you guys to think I'm the dude that only shows off the wins. Uh, I want to show you some of the dumb stuff I do. I hope uh, I hope to help educate you and uh, and, and kind of give some content that shows um, some of the mistakes I've made and some of the ways to learn from your mistakes. Um, Again, this is not the end of the world type of a submission, but it's a uh, it's 137 card submission. Uh, 117 of those cards were mine. Uh, 20 of the cards were a friend of mine here in uh, in Baton Rouge who uh, subbed with me. Um, the percentages on my 117, I'm going to give those to you. Um, in, in, like I said, sometimes you nail it and sometimes you don't. If you look at my last video, which was 2012 Prism Base Cards, as you know, I'm chasing the set. I think my gem percentage was almost 70%, which is great. This one, uh, 44 out of the 117 gemmed, so 37%. Uh, 58%, 68 out of the 117 were PSA 9, and then uh, 5 of them weren't graded uh, out of my 117, so 4%. Uh, or they were graded an eight, so an eight or a min gem. Some of these, uh, and this is probably a, a topic for another video, but on ultra modern shiny, when I submit those, I usually put a minimum grade of nine because I don't want an eight. But if it's a little bit bigger card, I'll go ahead and get it slabbed as an eight. Um, but anyway, that's not the the, the bad news. The you know the thirty seven percent gem rate is not the bad news. The bad news is of the one hundred and seventeen cards that I sent in, um, if I had known then. What I know now uh, <laughs> regarding where, you know, ultra modern, shiny, low end, uh, color, second year, you know, just kind of low end insert type stuff. If I'd have known where that market was going, I probably would have sent in 10 of these 117 cards. So I don't want to waste any more time. Uh, let's get you going here. Um, again, I've got all 137 in here, but only 117 are mine. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's start. It's going to be a heavy dose of Shy Gilgis Alexander second year cards. So this was my play. I made the same play, um, with Luka Doncic with his second year cards. Uh, and I absolutely smashed that, um, you know, buying Luka Doncic second year prism silvers for pennies, um, you know, before the market exploded a year ago or, or in 2021, grading them, getting them back. And I got those back in time and I did really, really well on second year Doncic Ruby, second year Doncic Green, second year Doncic Silvers. Did fine on second year Doncic Base, believe it or not, even though those aren't worth a damn thing anymore. Um, so really what this comes down to is if PSA would have sent these back to me in 90 days, I would have looked like a genius. But because they sent it back in a year, it's a lesson learned and it's uh, some enjoyable content for you guys. Anyway, so I'm going to flip quick, guys. Uh, Shy PSA 10 second year. Shy Silver PSA 9 second year. I was paying maybe $3, $4 for these cards. Shy PSA 9 second year. So I'm not going to get crushed. Um, you know, I haven't looked to see what a second year Shy Gilgis Alexander PSA 9 is worth. Um, I think the grading fee on these at the time. Uh, that I sent it in and I, I can go check the sheet was uh, $12. So I'm into these for let's say $15 with, with shipping and insurance. Um, maybe, maybe let's say 16, 17, 18, depending on what I paid for them. Um, again, I'm not going to go into too much detail about bitching about should have got a 10 instead of a nine and all that. I mean, it is what it is, man. I, honestly, I think there's just good days and bad days and good graders and bad graders and uh, you know, your, your percentage of gems of tens can swing from 35% to 60%, just depending on the day, regardless of your techniques, regardless of your scrutiny, regardless of the methods that you employ to prepare the cards for grading and how you ship them and protect them. And it's just one of those things, man. So, um, like I said, I'm going quick. So got some greens in here. These I probably paid a dollar to $2 each. Um, 
and, and let me know what you think in the comments. Here's what here's where, where I stand on these. You're gonna see a lot of the same types of cards um, that have dipped and are pretty much worthless. Uh, well, I shouldn't say worthless, but <clears throat> not highly sought after right now. Base cards and then unnumbered parallels and things like that. I made a move on second year Shea Gilders Alexanders. I think he's kind of off the radar right now. I think his team is absolutely atrocious. They lost to a John Morantless uh, Thunder team. I mean, a Grizzly team by 73 points, which is inexplicable. Um, and so I think this, uh, here are a couple of, uh, of I collect De'Aaron Fox, I PC De'Aaron Fox, so I sent a couple of these too because I think he's a franchise player. I know that it's weird. It's like the entire hobby is kind of split on De'Aaron Fox. I love the dude. I, I think he's just in, you know, he's in Cowtown, man. He's in Sacto. Um, but if you go look at the standings, the dude's got him. Even though his numbers aren't fantastic this year, they were last year. Even though his numbers aren't fantastic this year, these might be Brian's. I think these are. Uh, these are my, my other Brian. Uh, my Brian here, friend locally. So I think these Foxes are his cards. I have to check the sheet. Um, but uh, a really cool insert from Mosaic Center Stage here. But I think Fox is uh, is doing his job. He's running the team. They're uh, they're. I mean, I think they're better than people thought they would be. Davion Mitchell has underperformed, in my opinion. Hadn't provided a lift. Bagley has literally disappeared off the face of the earth. They're trying to get him minutes just to see if they can trade the dude. Um, and he's okay in his minutes. I, I just figure somebody whose back is against the wall like that. I just figured Bagley would be playing like an animal. I just don't see the motor, man. I love him, and I got some cards of him uh, that I'm just holding. Um, he's just not hes just not putting up the numbers he needs to put up to. Here's a cool second-year uh, Ingram Optic Hollow. Good-looking card. Uh, and then these, this is, I think these are my plays. Yeah, so I, I PC Jalen Brown as well. So you got a couple of Jalen Brown second-years, Optic Hollow 9, Optic Hollow 10. Um, you got a all clear for takeoff hollow PSA nine, which is a really cool card. Um, I like inserts. Um, I, and that stems from the fact that, you know, the bulk of my collection is, uh, Giannis, um, you know, I mean, uh, nineties Jordan inserts and parallels. And so I like inserts and I hope one day the, you know, the hobby turns away from strictly focusing on these ultra modern base parallels and actually starts looking at the inserts or insert parallels. Um, and gives it a little bit of credence. That's a nice little Doncic uh, silver second year card. PSA 10, I like it. Uh, Doncic green second year, PSA 9. Um, let me know, uh, yeah, I was getting to this, sorry, I got sidetracked. Let me know what you would do with these cards in the comments. Um, you know, specifically the Shea Gilgis Alexander second year. Would you do something different with the 10s than you would the 9s? Would you keep the 10s, sell the 9s? Would you keep the 9s, sell the 10s? Would you sell all of it? Would you sell none of it? Now, here's a cool big card um, that came back, a PSA 6. I have no idea what the hell could have happened. Um, it looks like, if you look down here, it looks like that's bent. I definitely, I am certain that card was not bent when I sent it in. There is no way uh, that I would have sent in a card with that kind of bend on it. I, that actually might be a glare from the sleeve. This has got the new sleeve. So on the die cuts now, you know, PSA has this new inner sleeve. I don't know if you can see if I turn it, you can kind of see the ridges of the sleeve inside there. Really cool, um, a garland. It's called Universal Die Cut. It's a PSA 6. Um, I know what everybody would do with this one. It's number to eight. Um, just an awesome looking card. Um, he is absolutely crushing it. If you haven't paid attention to what Garland's doing, go look at the box scores and go look at Cleveland's record for God's sakes. He is uh, defying the odds. Let me know what you would do with these second year uh, Shea Gilgis Alexanders. I got a bunch more. I'm going to start flipping quick. Um, would you hold them on? Would you flip them? Would you sell them? I'm going to wait. Uh, I, I don't need it. I don't need the money now. I certainly, um, I can't imagine they become any less valuable. Pink Ice 9. Pink Eyes 9. Um, I'm just going to hold them. And maybe that's stupid. Um, I don't know. Uh, let me know what you think. I just don't see any reason to sell them for, you know, what I think are pennies on the dollar. I think one day, um, there's a nice little uh, Revolution Base 10. Revolution, another just gorgeous product. I'm sorry. This is one of my favorites. Revolution in status. If you know me and you've watched my videos, you know how I feel about Revolution in status. I just think they're undervalued. Um, Here's optic hollows. Optic hollows are just filthy, impossible to grade, man. These things, the gym rate on optic hollows is just 
horrible. Um, and, and, and you can tell why. So similar to 2012 Prism, look how much surface there is. So first of all, if you get the 10, or even this is a nine, if you get the nine, look how insane and, and refractive, I guess if that's the word, that is. I mean, that's a beautiful card. Um, it just shows scratches so easy. And then, and then because there's four borders, um, if the borders are slightly off, left to right or up to down, it's just glaring. It's just real easy to see. Um, but it looks, man, this one looks centered. I would have hoped that would have got a 10. Um, I'm telling you, I paid damn near nothing. So hopefully this card goes viral. It says Fanatics on it, and everybody's fanatical about Fanatics taking over. Um, this, I think, was kind of their first foray into the hobby where they had some say in the in the card. It's kind of like a silver wave, I would call it. I mean, that's what I would call it. Two more Fanatics, another 9 and a 10. Um, got some blue velocity here. This is all second year uh, SGA stuff, you know? Um, like I said, there ain't a lot to it right now. Um, I don't know per se if I'm gonna send this to the PWC C Vault because these aren't the types of cards that you wanna sell in a PWCC auction. Um, I'll probably keep them here uh, in Baton Rouge, uh, just keep them in my safe at home, and then just wait uh, to see if the timing changes, see if the you know the demand in the market grows a little bit, if SGA can kind of catch a little bit of fire, and I can get some value out of these. And then I'll move them. You know, maybe I keep one PSA 10 because I like the kid, but uh, I'll probably move them all um, at some point. Um, I like the mosaics. I know they're they're kind of low end. It's a low end. You know, these unnumbered parallels are kind of low end, but I like them. You know, hopefully this is on the screen. I haven't really been paying attention. I've been talking tens, nine orange reactive, reactive orange, nine reactive orange, nine reactive blue, ten reactive blue, right? Good luck trying to find the difference between a 10 and a 9 on these mosaics. Absolutely impossible. Uh, they all look like 10s to me. The surface on all these is just popping, man. I mean, I again, I know there's a million of these printed. I'm not an idiot. Um, I just got them so cheap, there was a margin there. Uh, and that margin shrank significantly uh, over the last 12 months. 10, a 10 mosaic, 9... A red mosaic nine. The market, uh, the margin on these uh, on these second year shies just just shrank. I mean, it's it's probably one fourth of what it was. It probably dropped to about one fourth of what it was. Okay, so here's a relatively cool card. Um, really pissed. I got an eight on this. Uh, this is uh, I sent I think three, maybe three or four Spectre cards. Uh, this is a Celestial Giannis, which is I think a case hit. Correct me if I'm wrong. It may not be a case hit. Maybe it's a box hit. I don't know. But it's uh, numbered eighty nine out of ninety nine. I'll still keep this just because I collect Giannis and I thought it was a cool card. It's a cool picture of him doing his one foot one hand windmill, uh, which he he kind of patented. Silver, uh, Spectra Giannis. Spectra is a, that, that product. It's like, is it low end? Is it high end? Okay, so all you soccer fans, um, I made a play on Timo Werner. Uh, that did not work out because he's flamed out with Chelsea. He's just kind of an afterthought now. The dude's lightning fast. He just has no confidence and can't finish. Uh, but I'm going to go real quick through here. PSA 9, PSA 9. These are all 2018 Prism uh, World Cup uh, Timo Werner rookie cards. 2018, 10, 10, 10, 9. And speaking of the market and the margin, the profit margin shrinking from the time of submission until now. My gosh, on this card, that uh, this card... I was gonna make a pretty good chunk of change on. I actually bought all these from uh, Comp C, believe it or not. Had them shipped to my house and then made a, uh, you know, made my play where I buy raw grade and then sub to PSA. Actually worked out really well because I think I went like 50% gym on those. It's gonna make great money because I got them for nothing on Comp C. It didn't work out. Uh, some more shy. Like I said, this is gonna be a shy heavy video. Tens, nine, ten, ten. 10, 10, 9. Try to make a little room. 9s, 10. Now we got more silvers. 9. I didn't do well on the silvers. 9, 9, 9, 10, 9. Like I said, maybe 5, 6 bucks per card. Maybe 7 bucks. Now it's in a PSA 10 slab. I haven't looked at the pop. I could probably put a little more research in and let you guys know the pop on these cards and kind of the going market value, but I'll let y'all check that out. That's kind of part of the fun of it. Um, I think this is going to be a pretty chunky stack here of stuff that uh, my friend Brian sent. 
Uh, I thought this was a cool insert that uh, that Optic does from year to year. It's a pretty cool looking. It's kind of a busy, um, you know, busy artwork, but uh, it's that uh, Express Lane, and it's a lime green um, number to 149. So uh, my friend Brian also likes De'Aaron Fox, and so he's got Swipe of the Fox here, another Express Lane lime green. He went 0 for 2 on that one. Um, and then here, as you can see, I went back. You know, like I said, this is kind of mosaic heavy as well. So I got the Giannis uh, Jam Masters uh, Mosaic 9. Two inserts, I'm telling you guys right now, that are impossible to buy raw, grade, and flip. Or po impossible to gym. Uh, I shouldn't say impossible. Very, very difficult to gym two modern inserts. One, high voltage. Two, crunch time. Those two inserts, for whatever reason, I've sent tons of LeBrons, Doncic, and Giannis. Sent tons of them. I cannot get those to gym. I mean, I've probably sent, between the three of those players, probably 25, and I might have gotten two PSA 10s back. Just got absolutely crushed. Um, my friend Brian also here, uh, he's got two of these. Franchise feature, bookers, a nine and a 10. Um, he was looking great if PSA could have got the stuff back in time. You know, nobody thought the Suns were gonna go to the finals and Booker was gonna explode like that, but he did. Here's a cool looking Express Lane Hollow 10. Um, I know all those bookers are going to be for sale. Speaking of the margin disappearing, my God, have y'all seen what has happened to MPJ prices? If you are a believer in MPJ and you're not buying this dip, you can't even call it a dip. It's a cliff. Uh, if you're not buying MPJ now and you're a believer, it really all comes down to uh, his back. Um, we got a Frank Jackson Mojo, PSA 9, number to 25. Number one out of 25, Frank's actually playing really well. Uh, he's a weird dude. He plays in Detroit. He's kind of a backup point guard slash six man. Um, he's, uh, is he wearing old school Jordan ones? Oh my Lord, I can't tell. Um, anyway, um, I still think he's a talented player. He's probably a rotation guy. I think Brian had a little bit higher expectations for him than what he's showing right now, but he's getting a little bit of run in Detroit. Uh, this is a cool insert that uh, uh, Mosaic puts out. It's called Overdrive. I think it's really cool looking. Um, anyway, it's a PSA 9 for uh, Donovan Mitchell. Oof. Speaking of margins, yep. Uh, Brian sent this one in and nailed it. Um, you know, I, like I said, I don't really submit or collect any football whatsoever. I think I have seven football cards in my collection as far as uh, stuff that I actually keep, um, like a couple Jerry Rice's. Uh, a couple PMG Reds. Uh, Brian sent this center stage Josh Allen PSA 10 in. Again, would have been amazing to cash out three months ago. So here's the biggest card in the whole submission. Ironically, it's a football card, and Brian got it. And I don't, he also doesn't collect football, but he made a Joe Burrow play. Um, you know, Baton Rouge's uh, favorite son. Anyway, it's a optic preview, Joe Burrow rookie red green. I think this card's about 350, 400 in PSA 10 condition. The, the pop is super low. Um, you know, the centering on the back is not great left to right. Um, the centering on the front is not great left to right. Somehow Brian gets a 10 and I got screwed on all of my uh, SGA second years. Um, a Doncic Supernova insert PSA 10. It's never bad to get a couple Doncic inserts. A Doncic 9. A Doncic uh, rookie insert Faces of the Future 9. Um, tough. It's a paper card. It's got black corners and dark edges front and back. But kind of got like that nebula feel. But anyway, it's a it's low end and high pop. Uh, and then a uh, a 2019 select courtside De'Aaron Fox PSA nine. And that's it, guys. And so, um, like I said, please don't judge. Uh, Eleven months ago, twelve months ago, actually almost exactly twelve months ago, this was a this is a decent play in the hobby. Um, not so much anymore. Um, I have a you know my philosophy is collect to uh, invest to collect. And so I like to. And that's kind of how I got into the hobby, investing in uh, prism base Giannis raw, grading them, flipping them, and then taking that money and buying bigger cards. That's kind of what I do. That's kind of what I believe in. Um, it kind of it's a nice balance because I grow my PC of low pop '90s cards, historic cards, iconic cards that I think are going to have lasting value, and I generate revenue and income from selling ultra modern and shiny and making moves on some. A little bit higher pop cards and putting a little bit of work in cleaning and submitting and doing stuff like that plus it's fun to get submissions back and so basically i invest and then i take those profits and i put those profits into cards that i want to keep you know long term um 
Anyway, that's it, guys. Another PSA reveal video. Uh, if you haven't checked out uh, some of my recurring episodes of Basketball Card Battles, check those out. One of those is going to be dropping tomorrow on Monday. It's going to be a new one. I'll give you a little teaser. It's going to be Jordan versus Jordan. Um, the last one was Giannis versus Giannis, where we compared a, a Giannis gold kaboom versus the Giannis rookie silver. Um, the next one is going to be Jordan versus Jordan. It's going to be fun. It's goat versus goat. It's goat on goat crime. Uh, I'm going to let you guys see uh, two Jordan cards. It's actually the same card in different grades. And you guys uh, are going to let me know in the comments. And I'm going to deep, deep dive into which one I think is a better investment. And um, it's not a pump and dump because I own both of the cards. So it's going to be uh, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be something um, a friend of mine, Eric Myers, is going to want to watch. Uh, Eric, if you're watching this, you need to check out this uh, this video because I know you and I have talked about this. It's uh, it's going to be Jordan on Jordan crime. So uh, if you if you haven't checked out my basketball card uh, battles videos, go check out episodes one and two. Episode three comes out tomorrow. And in addition, I do something called Explore the Card, where we take a very deep, um, intricate look into the history, the you know the the origin, the pop, the value, the historic uh, value change. Uh, of a Michael Jordan 1990 or 80s or 90s uh, insert or parallel. And I've dropped, uh, I think now, three episodes on three different Michael Jordan cards from the 90s. I plan to create a library. Hopefully you guys, if you don't get to watch these videos soon after they finish, hopefully you can go back and binge watch them and watch, you know, 20 weeks from now, hopefully you have 20 Explore the Card videos to watch on 20 different Jordan inserts or parallels. And, and hopefully that helps new uh, Jordan collectors and new 90s collectors and and uh, helps kill some some time on the treadmill or on the bike or on a long car trip on the way to a card show. That's kind of what I want to get out of this. Um, plus, it helps me learn. I'm educating myself and learning so much every day, uh, making those those explore the card videos and basketball card battle videos. Um, this PSA reveal was more just for your entertainment and just to show you the kind of moves that I was making about a year ago. Uh, but anyway, that's it for the video. If you guys haven't yet, do me a favor. Um, I really appreciate all the comments. Uh, if you like the video and you want to check out the other videos, hit the subscribe button in the bottom right of this screen. Um, hit the thumbs up button if you like the video. Um, and then uh, and then subscribe and hit the bell icon to get constant notifications. I'm, I'm right at three videos a week, sometimes four right now. I don't know how long I can keep this up because... Uh, when I get busy at work, you know, I don't have time to make a lot of videos, but right now I'm kind of churning and burning. So hopefully you guys are enjoying that and I'm getting better at it. Um, it it's crucial that if you do like it, spread the word, send an email, send a text, uh, Instagram somebody and, and let them know, hey, this dude Cajun Cardboard, he's from Louisiana, but he's not an idiot. I didn't know they had cards in Louisiana, let alone basketball cards. Uh, go check out his stuff. I really appreciate it. I'm trying to grow it. Um, you know, I'm basically viral. I have 54 subscribers. I mean, that's incredible, right? So uh, hopefully one day, <laughs> I'm, I'm obviously joking, but hopefully one day, a year from now, we can look back and I can laugh at how excited I was to have 54 subscribers watching my stuff. Um, maybe, it'll, maybe it'll be 154. Who knows? Uh, but anyway, uh, love hearing from you guys. Uh, if you want to direct message me anything to improve these videos or any comments or thoughts you have, put it on this YouTube um, just comment below and if uh, you want to shoot me a DM and you want to do something off YouTube or you're interested in any of these cards um, or have any input or just want to communicate and talk about cards generally, I'm always available. I can talk about cards all day. So I'm on Instagram and Facebook so I can get the direct message on either. And uh, again, my name's Brian. So hope hope to hear from you guys and get some, get some feedback, good or bad. Just keep it clean. Uh, I'm Cajun Cardboard on Facebook and on Instagram. So if you're not following me there, you're welcome to. I post tons of stuff pretty much every single day. Um, that's it, guys. That's it for this video. Stay tuned for the next one. I really appreciate you listening. Peace.